Uh, let's see, what did I watch this on? Uh, what did I watch the hand that rocks the cradle on? Could have been Hulu, could have been Amazon Prime. Don't think it was Netflix. This movie from 1992 was a pretty big hit. Made over a hundred million dollars when that was a thing that you bragged about in a movie because they weren't spending hundreds of millions of dollars on them. So it's Rebecca De Mornay, Annabelle Sciorra, probably saying that wrong. Uh, is it Annabelle or, yeah, maybe, uh, oh. Anyhow, I think her character's name's Claire. Uh, Peyton is the name of Rebecca De Mornay. I'm gonna try to stick with those names. This is a movie that plays on the late 80s, early 90s, domestic thriller. Whatever we can do to scare the white gals. Somebody's cheating on your husband, right? Fatal attraction. Oh, what do we got in this one? Someone's gonna raise your baby for you. Yeah, so Q, John Delancey, is an OBGYN. He gives uh, Claire uh, an exam. She says it was sexual assault. He ends up committing suicide. His wife, who is pregnant, loses her child, gets an emergency hysterectomy, goes out on the warpath for revenge. And that's, so in a way, that's kind of how this movie works. It's a revenge film. And uh, Rebecca De Mornay is really uh, scary and intimidating. Uh, she, she's, go, she's running the gambit of all things that could upset uh, the housewives in the crowd. And it's a good title for a movie, too, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. The title's mentioned by Julianne Moore, who I didn't even realize was in this movie. She's Claire's friend, uh, ex-lover of her husband. Peyton uh, asserts herself as a nanny. Like, oh, hey, yeah, sorry. Hey, I was just in the kind of in the way. I heard maybe you had a newborn. Because she, she had her kid, right? And I'm going to sneak in your house and breastfeed your kid. And, and the weird thing is, there's creepy music like, oh, she gonna, she, she's going to suffocate the baby. First day on the job. Nope, she whips a boob out, breastfeeds. And the music, like, calms down. I would still be kind of irate about that. I'd be like, whoa, yeah, I did not give you permission, lady. <laughs> but it, it stops the creepy music and goes calm and soothing. She tries to have an affair with the husband. That doesn't work. But you know what she does do? Gets Ernie Hudson framed for being a pedo. Gets some of her young daughter's underwear into his cart. He has a cart that attaches to a bike and he's with like the Helping Hand Society or whatever. He's a, a mentally slow guy building a fence forever around the house. The fence comes into play later in the movie. Julianne Moore figures out that Peyton was the wife of the doctor because she had some wind chimes. And it's like, what crazy person would have a wind chime in Seattle? This lady, same wind chime as in the paper when it showed the doctor's house. By the way, on the market for $800,000. That's gotta be a $10 million house now, at least. The people who made money are those in real estate in the cities. Let me tell you, because it's okay to be house rich. Then you could just come to the Midwest where you can buy anything you want and live forever. Not even have to work. So at any rate, Julia Moore heading to the house. Uh, hell, she's even got a cell phone in 1992 in the car. She's got a BMW. Everybody get out of her way. Uh, she goes to see Peyton, exposes her. Peyton had set a booby trap in the greenhouse. Yeah, let's install the fear of greenhouses in those white gals. Yeah, I had this shovel next to this crank so that when someone opened the door, it'd knock over the shovel shatter the ceiling I uh, just crank too fast assume it would shatter the ceiling must have had some weak glass back then have all that glass fall down Julian Moore opened the shed uh, able to kind of just say that's an accident uh, Claire has asthma yep this was one of those times when asthma was a plot point in movies don't see a whole lot of it today but boy in the 90s did that really hit so she's got asthma uh, Peyton has like expelled all the gas out of her inhalers. She, uh, Claire goes to the hospital. Uh, eventually Claire catches on, realizes what was Julian Moore looking at? Goes to the house that's on the market. Still, why would it still be on the market? At that rate, anybody could have snatched this shit up. Sees that she had a breast pump and she's like, I never understood this as a kid. 
Oh, that's how she kept her milk up. What? Okay, you gotta keep in mind, I'm like, I don't know, seven, going, huh? Seven, eight, just what? What are we going on about here? So when she realizes that her kid was starving when she was trying to breastfeed, it's because Peyton was doing it. Peyton was becoming the mom. Peyton was hanging out with the little girl, cussing at little boys and uh, twisting their arms around when they did something mean to her. You know, this is the fear of raising, raising her family for her, right? So they have a big showdown. They try to get Stabby in the attic. Uh, Ernie Hudson comes back. He offers some redemption, doesn't want to give up the baby. Uh, Peyton gets thrown out the window by mom who has to man up. Lands on the picket fence stab. It probably wasn't needed to have the picket fence break her fall. I think the concrete could have done that. But the point is it makes it full circle. Everybody gets their little bit of redemption. Not a bad movie at all. Like this is one of the better domestic thrillers. Uh, if you you want to see something like this, I mean, go and watch this with your girlfriend. If you have, well, let's pretend you have a girlfriend. I give The Hand That Rocks the Cradle three out of four stars.